Hey guys, so last week I made a video with a tour of the garage to celebrate hitting 10,000 subscribers after not making any videos on this channel for more than three years and picked up another 20,000 or so. So we've never had a week like that growing the VinWiki channel, but thank you so much for watching, subscribing, sharing the video, and I'm glad it was something that I guess people wanted to see. But another question that I get asked all the time is can we get a tour of the VinWiki set? And as kind of a reveal, there's not just one VinWiki set. Now the story of how we started VinWiki is something we can tell another day and why we started making the YouTube videos. But originally, when we started VinWiki Car Stories, I just invited about 10 or 15 friends out to our VinWiki warehouse one day. And we just started sitting around telling car stories. Lots of beer, lots of pizza, and lots of good stories. And so we kind of tried that as an experiment. And in setting that up, I just grabbed a bunch of stuff that I had laying around and threw it in the corner of our warehouse. And so originally we shot them in a big open concrete floor, 18 foot ceilings, 4,000 or so square foot warehouse with my cars kind of parked right behind the camera. And we did that in the same way, just adding a few things to the background and refining things very, very slightly for about the first 300 videos. And one day I just got tired of it. It was really loud. It was either hot or cold because there was no air conditioning or heating in there. And the neighbors in the adjacent unit used these really loud pumps because their business was sucking used waste like fast food oil out of their receptacles and then filtering it in the unit next door to us. So it was a miserable place to film, but it was the only thing I had. And, and the warehouse unit that we had also had a few offices built out kind of towards the front and there were long skinny units, but none of the rooms were big enough to develop enough room from the camera to really get the shot that we were looking for. But one day, I don't remember who was in there filming, I just got sick of it. I said, look, it's too loud, it's too cold, it's too miserable to shoot videos in here. And so overnight, I moved our set into our office. Now, prior to that, I'd asked our landlord if I could somehow move to a different unit or something that had a bigger indoor kind of insulated room. And they had said no. In fact, they said, before too terribly long, we're gonna get tired of you paying so little in rent that we're just gonna kick you out anyway. So I was like, all right, forget I asked. So a few days later, I went back in and just busted out a wall in our office to make a room big enough that we could shoot these things. I boarded up the windows and moved everything piece by piece. Now that was actually a pretty big difference in the way that the background looked from one shot in the big warehouse to the next shot in the smaller kind of multiple offices that had been combined. But fortunately, very few people even noticed. I had put all the same ingredients in the background and arranged the camera angle pretty close, but it was actually quite a different shot. But people just thought we got a new camera or changed the lens or changed the lighting a bit. And so I guess we got away with it. And not that it would have been a big deal for people to know that we moved the VinWiki set, but we very much wanted it to still feel like that industrial automotive warehouse. And so we had a lot of fun filming there. It was a much kinder environment. The audio was massively better. The echo in the previous warehouse had just been atrocious. I mean, much worse than even this is. And so we did that for a good long while. But then around the end of last year, my landlord called and said, we'd like you out by the end of next month. I said, well, what do you mean? Said, well, you're paying so far below market rate for this office, we need it to go up. And so they said, we, we need you out. And they, I eventually kind of came to a preliminary agreement saying, I'm gonna pay about two and a half times as much rent as I've been paying to stay because I couldn't find a place to put all my cars and to shoot our videos. And that was really the only thing I was using it for. Most of the development for the VinWiki app is outsourced at this point. So it wasn't something that we needed an awful lot of space for. And so at the 11th hour, I found this house, found my dream house with my dream garage and I was able to make the transition work and not have to pay that exorbitant rent. In fact, the mortgage here is less than it would have been to keep renting that warehouse. And so that was a perfect outcome, but it meant I had to move the set again. So this house has a room above the garage that's kind of designed to be almost an in-law suite or something like that. And it's got kind of a kitchenette. And this is now the VinWiki story set. So when I sit here telling car stories, or our other guests do the same, the background that you see is very, very similar to what I'd replicated in my office back at the VinWiki warehouse. And so even though we don't have that space anymore, and we shoot them here at my house, everything behind me looks pretty similar. The room is very similar in size, and we measured everything as we moved it all to try to make sure that we kept everything as similar as possible. 
And so I'll walk you through a little bit of some of the artifacts of automobilia that we've got here in it. This is actually one of the rear wheels off of my gray LP640. That was the fourth LP640 that I had, the gray Canadian car that had the previous title issue due to the fraudulently reported theft by the dealer in Canada. The neon alligator was actually a gift I got in middle school for Christmas from my grandfather. He lives in Louisiana most of the time, and he had sent me that as because I always liked alligators and reptiles and things of that nature, and uh, I very much love it. And we were looking for something to kind of add some backlighting without being too bright, and so that's been a really, really good thing. This was actually a model car signed by Brock Yates, obviously one of my personal heroes, and so that was given to me by Doug Beecham, who runs the Brock Yates Memorial Fund definitely a worthy cause that we all should support. A couple bottles of Avalon King ceramic coating to support the sponsor. And the next is actually a door from a Ferrari California. When we were first looking at different promotional ideas for different ways to bring attention to Vinwicky, we were looking at different show cars and I wanted to do some paint tests and things of different things we could do to that. I'll talk a little more about it when we get to the other Ferrari California fender in the back. This, of course, is the infamous oil pan from my first Lamborghini Gallardo that was damaged rather considerably. This hole right here is where one of the two and a half pistons exited the engine and broke rather significantly and catastrophically. This is a collection of keys that I've accumulated over the years. There's a few different Lamborghini keys, Bentley keys, Audi keys, Ferrari keys, Lotus keys. A McLaren key, all these different things, and I, I had different keys that had either broken or the cars had been totaled or whatever the case may be, just different circumstances meant I had a bunch of keys. And so obviously none of those go to cars that I currently own or that really anybody owns and uses, but of course it makes for a good conversation piece. This is a plaque that I got from the Cannonball Memorial Run. I definitely love their cause and it's a, something that we all need to get behind to support law enforcement. This is one of my favorite things right here. It's actually a circuit board that Forrest designed for his radar jamming prototype that we were going to use back in 2013. If you look really closely right here, it says Adaptive Cruise Control and Collision Avoidance System Prototype with a Mercedes-Benz logo. Of course, it's illegal to have an active radar jammer in a car in the United States without FCC permitting. And so we didn't have such permitting, so the penalty if we got caught using it would have been a year in prison and a $100,000 fine, I do believe, neither of which I could have afforded at the time. And so I, we decided that we would disguise it. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite ready to go back then. So we ended up just using radar detection rather than active radar jamming. We did have laser jammers. This is actually something that got left behind from the McLaren 675LT press car for the US. It was a chicane gray car, and we didn't actually know how to open the rear bonnet at the time, and this would have been the prop to do it in saving weight. They didn't put a hinge that would stay up or an onboard prop. So this is a carbon fiber rod that I like using to point for that things, which I think I'll continue to do. This is the plaque that YouTube sent us when the VinWiki channel hit 100,000 subscribers. Definitely a huge moment for us. I mean, I never expected that we'd develop our own audience at all here. I mean, it's it's been a blast. It's been a whole lot of fun, but all very accidental and unexpected. This is a European delivery temporary tag that Tom Park had on his Porsche GT3 touring car last year. And so he got that car and has since taken U.S. delivery via the dealer in Seattle and is now driving it around the Pacific Northwest. I think he's actually down in California right now. I've bought a few of these, unfortunately. These are the slip ring and steering column setup for a Lamborghini Gallardo. And there is a clock spring right in here that tends to break, and it ends up costing about $1,200 to cure the airbag light. So unfortunately, it's rather common, especially on the e-gear cars, and it's a rather expensive thing to fix. This is a 2B race exhaust for the Ferrari 612, and the accident where I got the biggest diminished value settlement ever in the state of Georgia, it was slightly bent and damaged, and so they bought me a new one. So, you know, nice of the insurance and good for the claim, but not necessarily something that I had to have. Here's a copy of my book that I keep back there for the record. You can get that on Amazon if you care to hear more about the backstory of our New York to LA record. This is the original differential from my gray LP640. It failed probably due to too many miles run with the wrong tires on it. I've actually got a set of Michelin tires sized for a Murcielago right here, but they are, were on the car when I got it because you couldn't buy the Pirellis. And those tend to be 
quite a, an issue. The reason I have this wheel here also is because it was cracked at some point. Not on the barrel, which is not uncommon for wheels, but actually on one of the spokes. So it was certainly unsafe. I've never seen a wheel fail like that, but obviously at some point it slid pretty hard into a curb in Canada. So alas, I replaced it before I sold it to the new owner who has since put some very large aftermarket wheels on the car. So, oh well. One of my great grandfathers had a Shell gas station and I was digging through my grandmother's house and I found a couple of Shell items out of a gas station. So this was for one of the pumps. I guess it would have had the readout and the counter for the gallons being sold. So I love it as another place to put some stickers and as something that's important to our family. This Michelin man I actually shrewdly negotiated alongside the service repair bill at a local shop not far from the old Vinwicky warehouse that did the work on the 95 Cadillac Fleetwood Brougham limousine before John Ficarra, John Harrison, Alec Trichter and I took it on the last running of the 2904. So it was a really, really fun drive, but it was all done at the very last minute because the Audi wasn't ready. And so in paying a very large service bill, I got this Kindle oil sign and the Michelin man from him in addition to the uh, lots of parts and things like that. We've collected a lot of stickers over the years with uh, different sponsors, different supporters, and different people we like from Vinwiki, and so we just throw those back there in the back of a video set. That tends to be a really, really good thing. This is a 2008 Gallardo Superleggero wheel that was damaged at some point, curbed kind of badly, and they're not supposed to be painted gold, although I love gold wheels on Lamborghinis. Under it are a couple of tires that I've worn out rather badly. The lower two, if you come around this way and see, this is one of the tires that was on the CL during the record and on the S55 during the competitive event record. And actually this tire I think was one that was on the spare that we used and it wore out entirely. And uh, one day Rutledge Wood was over here and noticed how terribly worn it was. I wasn't driving the car very much at the time, but it was definitely time to be replaced. Some different lanyards and badges from different things that we did for Lamborghini events and other car events. That's a photo from one of our first Vinwiki promotional trips going to Cars and Coffee in Nashville, taken by a friend of mine, Bruno. Uh, this is a Caffeine and Octane sign they gave us. They were our first sponsor of Vinwiki Car Stories, so we're very proud to continue to represent them, not just by going to their shows, but by showing them off wherever we can. So if you're in Atlanta on the first Sunday of every month, go check out Caffeine and Octane at Perimeter Mall. This is a Ferrari California Fender. So when I bought the Porsche 993, the thought certainly came up of whether or not we might do an RWB conversion to it. I wasn't really sure that I wanted to do it. I kind of have enjoyed learning about and seeing some of these builds. So it is a really, really cool process, but I didn't really know if it was for me. So we were gonna experiment with different things and ways we could cut cost. And one of those is by not having to repaint the car. Cause certainly if I was gonna have an RWB car, I didn't want it to be black. And so I was thinking of different options, but that's another 10 to $15,000 in expense when you think about doing all that to the car. So what I decided was that we would try to see what would happen if we just had a party the day before and invited a whole lot of people out with sharp implements and we spent the day scratching all the paint off the car. Anybody who's ever had the fantasy of keying an exotic car could come out and manifest that upon the 993. But I wanted to see how it would look. So I went to the body shop and I got a broken fender off of a Ferrari California and we just started scratching it. And it ended up taking a lot longer than I'd ever imagined to get any kind of surface area coverage but I thought it would give kind of a rough world look to a rough world car. And it was a lot of fun to try, but it, when it came out, it just kind of looked dusty and gray and we'd wipe it off, but it really wasn't the effect I was looking for. So I went and got some Vinwicky green paint and we painted it and then wiped it off. And that kind of made all the scratches this greenish turquoise color that we use a lot. So I actually ended up really liking that, but the weight to do an RWB conversion was just so long that I really decided it didn't make an awful lot of sense. Oh, this is the transfer piping for the way we originally had the uh, pumps set up to go into the factory filler neck for the CL during the record run. These Edison bulbs have no significance whatsoever, but we just put them up there to give kind of some depth to the set. Most of the license plates don't really have any personal significance. I used to keep a lot of license plates from trades and things that would otherwise have just been scrapped and thrown away. 
We covered most of the original VinWiki office with them, but didn't have a whole lot more to go back in the set. So I put a few in the warehouse set and then ended up, when we did the office set, put them all along the back. That was the biggest and most noticeable difference. Of course, these are the sunglasses that I got paid for by the guy who punched me in the face for speeding through his neighborhood in my Audi. Over here, we've got one of the speed limit signs. We've sold these to raise money for the Cannonball Memorial Run and the Brock Case Memorial Fund. There might be three or four left on our VinWiki West store, but uh, it's been a great thing and it's something we like to hang around and you can put all different stickers and things like that on them. Back here, I've got a, an original Audubon no speed limit sign with another VinWiki sticker on it. This is the trophy you win if you win the 2904. Obviously we won in 2015 in the white S55. And each time you win, you have to add something to it. So originally it was just the hubcap. Then they added the car. Then I added the base. And now Arnie has to add something to it because he won the final running. That's the room key to the room we stayed at when we stayed at the Portofino Hotel and Marina in 2013 after the record. A fan sent me this. some. Antlers, as I'm told they're called, not horns, to a deer with some yellow paint splattered upon them to commemorate the story of me hitting the deer in my first Lamborghini Gallardo. There's a picture of Arnie and Captain Chaos and Syed after their win holding the 2904 trophy in San Francisco. Their 3145 is now the cross-country competitive event record. We've still got the New York to LA event record. This is the box that that wheel came in. So that is a 20-inch monolithic challenge wheel for a Ferrari 599, which also fits a Ferrari 612. And so this wheel was damaged very slightly, but it was still, they bought me a new one. This is a hubcap to Austin's Yugo. So all fun things and the whole range of automobiles in the back. This is one of the original taillights to the 993. Butler Tire gave us this Michelin sign along with their sponsorship last year. They're also going to be our sponsor later this summer, and we certainly appreciate their support of everything we do here at VinWiki. Some various lanyards, tickets, and things like that. This wheel gets a lot of speculation. It is manufactured by OZ, but it's original equipment from a 1999 Lamborghini Diablo Roadster. And it was owned by a local guy. I actually sold that car a couple of times since then, uh, but it is now in California. It's a titanium colored car, but not a millennium edition. And so that uh, wheel has a good ding in it right there. I'm not sure it necessarily is gonna get re-rounded, but it makes for a great decoration. This is the CLK 430 brake rotor that survived the 2015 running in the 2904, driven by Forrest and Dave Black. And it also made another run that would, they did the 2904 with the limo, so that would have been 2017. The original airbag steering wheel for the 993. This is the box that I got back from Roof when I shipped them my ECUs for the RT12S. Interestingly, there are several sets of control modules for a roof. On the passenger side, there's everything that controls the 996 motor. On the driver's side, there's everything that controls the 997 car. And making those work together and pass Georgia OB emissions was a big challenge. And so it took them a little while. It was right in the middle of all the diesel gate things. And I think they got a little bit of help from Bosch, but it was good fun. And I, uh, you know, got it back eventually. That car apparently has sold a couple of times since then. I think they had to spend forty to $50,000 to make the suspension work the right way and to make it make as much power as it was supposed to. It was supposed to make 730 horsepower. I think it made about 550 to 600. A couple other things. This globe was owned by my grandfather and he was recently moving and I found it in his basement and I thought that was just a fantastic thing to add to the set. Obviously most of our driving is here but we'd love to go elsewhere. This box is what they give you the plaque in from YouTube. Uh, hopefully before too terribly long on that channel we get a, their million subscriber one. This is one of the original headlights from the 993. They tend to fog and cloud. This is the suspension fluid for the Mercedes. I've consumed many, many gallons of that. This fake Russian flag was something we put on the limo for the a Russian Bureau of Manipulating Elections. I think that was the motif we set up for the 2904 that year. And so yeah, that's kind of just what makes up the set. Every once in a while we'll throw something else back there and add different things. I mean, again, it's not something I ever imagined and obviously we want to make sure that the quality of the video stays high. So adding better lighting and audio equipment has certainly been a big part of it. 
But this is the chair where all the stories have been told. I think we're up to about 550 stories captured and we continue to do it all the time. And it was something we kind of just put together and I never expected it to work the way that it has, but it's been an awfully interesting ride. So thank you so much for supporting the VinWiki channel. Be sure to subscribe and watch the videos there. Also, thanks for subscribing here. Again, I have no idea what kind of ongoing content I can make for this channel, but I'll do my best. So if you'd like to see more, let me know, subscribe, like, whatever people do to these things. But thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to share our stories.